Hey there, to all my listeners, Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word, because you need the prophetic word to hear the voice of God. That's why so many Christians are defeated, and that's why so many Christians are broken down, because God would have told you what was going to happen if you had listened to his prophets. All right, so we're going to jump in uh, with our scripture and our prophetic word. That would be Psalm 33, verse 6. That would be Psalm the book of Psalms, Psalm number 33, chapter 6. Out of the King James Bible, that says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Now, it pretty much says that in all the other translations, but uh, I'm going to read New Living Translation and then NIV. New Living says, The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. Then the NIV says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host, by the breath of his mouth. Okay? Now what does that mean for us and why is that relevant to us today? I'll tell you why. Because many of you have been crying out to the Lord about a blessing, and many of you have been crying out to God about increase, and many of you have been crying out to God about a lot of things. Okay? God wants to let you know two things. The first thing that the Lord wants to let you know is that he's the creator. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and their starry hosts by the breath, by the breath of his mouth. That means that everything that is in existence, okay, the heavens and their starry host, God literally breathed it. He breathed it into existence. You understand what that means? That means that when God said, let there be light, when God divided the light, when God said everything he said, it was his breath that made it come together, that made it coalesce. Okay? So that's the first thing the Lord wants you to know, that he's the creator. But what's the second thing, the thing that's relevant to you? I'll tell you what that is. What that is, is that for you to get the increase and the blessing and all the things you've been praying for and believing for and talking about, God has to breathe on it. Okay? God has to breathe on it. God has to breathe life into whatever it is that you're talking about. Remember when God made Adam, he carved out his body and then he leaned over and breathed, <sighs> breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And then, Adam, God bless you. God bless you. And then uh, man became a living soul after God breathed on him. So for you to get the increase, God is going to have to breathe on what you're doing. That's the thing. Okay? So the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And what that means is that we can't just sit around and do nothing and expect a harvest. You've got to get out there. You've got to work the soil. You've got to plant your seeds. You got to let the water and the sunshine and time do its work. But if God doesn't add the increase, that thing is not going to live. When that thing pokes its first little roots above the ground, if God does not breathe on it and give life to that plant, it's not going to live. So it is with everything that God created. Again, as the scripture said, he created it by the breath of his mouth. And so that's what a lot of people are missing. And that's the advantage that Christians have that worldly people do not. After we've done our labor, we've done our work, we've done our toil, we believed, we sowed, we tithed, we gave offerings, we sacrificed, we fasted, we worked hard, we got up late, and we stayed early. After we've done all that, the only way the increase is going to come is if God breathes on it. Okay, so those are the two things that the Lord wants you to know this week to give you encouragement that number one, he's the creator. He's the creator. He's the one that put it all together, number one. And number two, for that thing to come to life, God is going to have to breathe on it. And that's how it's going to come to life. So what I want you to do is today, don't wait another day. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. Take all the things you've been working on. Take all the things that you've been believing God for, wherever you have them written down. If you don't have them written down anywhere, write them down because I got my stuff written down. I got I can pull up my, my project sheet right now. 
I want you to take that and I want you to lift that up to God. Okay? And I want you to ask the, the, the Creator, the Almighty, to breathe on what you're doing. To give the increase. I want you to honor Him and acknowledge Him and quote this scripture to Him. Say to God, by the word of the Lord, by, the, by your word, Lord, were the heavens made, and the starry host, by the breath of your mouth. I'm not going to have increase, oh God, if you don't breathe on it and lift it up to God. Okay? And once you lift it up to God, then I want you to do a prophetic movement and I want you to breathe on it. <sighs> breathe right on your project sheet. Say, Prophet Taylor, that sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but it's a prophetic movement. What does that mean? That means that we do something in the natural that's indicative of what's happening in the spirit. That's what prophetic movement means. That's why you do stuff like that. Many times in the Old Testament, when God had them go out into battle, God would have them shout or break a pitcher. Sometimes he just had a march in silence. Why did God do that? Because he was having them do something in the natural that was reflecting what was going on in the spirit. So take your projects, take your prayer list, take the things you've been believing for, lift it up to God, pray Psalm 33 and 6, then you breathe on it. Just like that. Okay, And that's going to be symbolic of what God is going to do uh, to give you the encouragement you need to let you know that that thing is going to come to life because of the breath of the Lord. Because everything comes to life because of the breath of the Lord. Again, this is the advantage that we have as believers that unbelievers do not have. Okay, They can't lift up their works and ask God to breathe on it because God's not going to honor their works. God's not going to honor things in the kingdom of the world. That's the domain of the devil. The devil has to bless them. And whatever the devil look like he blesses you with, there's a hook in it. There's how it looks on the surface. It's all shiny and, and nice and, and pretty and attractive and looks good and all that. Hidden behind that is, is a hook. It's something that's going to snare your very soul. That's what the devil doesn't tell you whenever he gives you anything. Okay? How do you think so many people ended up in the wrong relationship? Because you got with somebody just because they look good. You got with somebody just because they made you feel good, but you didn't understand that inside that person that the devil sent in your life was a hook for your soul like Samson and Delilah. Was something designed from Satan to destroy you. That's why God tells us not to walk by sight. God tells us to walk by faith, to believe what he has to say through the Logos word, the written word, the Bible, and through the Rhema word, the breathed prophetic word. Because I'm going to say it again. I said it in the opening. If you're a Christian, God would have told you what was going to happen if you had listened to his prophets. Okay? And even uh, unbelievers, even when they come to us for prophetic ministry, we can give them the word of the Lord too because God wants them to know that he wants to be their father. He wants them to convert and come on over to his kingdom and get the full benefits, the full advantage of relationship with him. Okay? How many times have you been in a situation where you have either said it or you heard somebody say, after something happens, they say, I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have gone down that street. I knew I should have gone home. I knew I shouldn't have bought that food. I knew I shouldn't have bought them clothes. I knew I shouldn't have. I knew. How many times have you heard somebody say that? You know why? You know why? Because your spirit is designed to pick up the antenna from God so God can tell you what's happening before it happens. That sense in unbelievers is deadened. That's why they have to come and hear the prophetic word from us. But in believers, the same Holy Ghost that's in you is in all of us. And God wants to turn that sense up because God would have told you what was going to happen if you had listened to his prophets. Okay? So hear the word of the prophet of God today and get your list. Lift it up to God. Pray Psalm 33 and 6. And then you prophetically, symbolically breathe on it. And watch what God does today and this week. OK, you're going to come back full of testimony. You'll see. You'll see before Friday, some stuff is going to happen today if you obey this word. But before the end of the week, some stuff is going to happen where you know that it was God. There's no way it was anybody else but God, because it's going to be increase that only comes from the breath of God. 
There's going to be no other explanation in spite of all your hard work and your preparation and all the things you did, which we do have to do. There's going to be a supernatural breath, a supernatural increase, and it's going to blow your mind. Okay, That's going to happen before Friday. Write it down. Some stuff's going to happen today, but some stuff before the, the business week ends, there's going to be a supernatural increase because you listened to, believed, and obeyed this word. Okay, That's why God gives us the Logos word, the written word, and that's why God gives us the prophetic word, because I'm going to say it again. God will tell you what's going to happen before it happens if you listen to his prophets. Okay? So for those of you that are believing and those of you that are going to be obedient, be sure when I come on next time to put your testimony on the screen, because you're going to see it. And it's going to manifest. Okay? And I also want to let you know, this Thursday, I'll be doing my teaching. I want to get the date. This Thursday, I'll be doing my teaching on No More Genies. That date is the 14th. So this Thursday, uh, June 14th at 7 p.m., uh, just like now on Facebook Live and Periscope, I'm, I'm going to be doing my next teaching on No More Genies. Okay? And if you're unaware of what that means, I mean, I'm, I'm breaking down genie concept. Because genie concept has messed up a lot of people. Where well, you see God as a genie, and you don't really see him according to what the scriptures say. Okay, so that's going to be this Thursday. That's a more extensive teaching, so I, I can't really do it during this prophetic uh, live prophetic word time. So this Thursday, June 14th, 7 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live and Periscope, I'm going to be teaching about no more genies. But again, today, the, the word today was based on Psalm 33, 6, that by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Okay, so get your, your project sheet, the thing you've been working on. Pray Psalm 33.6 to God, then you breathe on it symbolically to reflect what's going to happen in the spirit. Some things are going to break today, and some things before Friday, you're going to see a supernatural increase. So those of you that are obedient, be sure to put your testimony on the screen when you tune in either Thursday night or next week this time. All right? So if I have any prayer requests, if there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen now, and I'll be happy to pray. Otherwise, we will do a close-out prayer. Okay, okay, there's a prophetic word I need to release to you. you. have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Okay. Any prayer requests? Okay, all right. There's a prophetic word I need to release. For behold, my people, I do not want you to be afraid. I am with you wherever you go. I am with you from your youngest days, from your mother's womb, from before your parents even meet, to your last day on earth, to your entry into heaven, from everlasting to everlasting. I am God, and I'm your God, and I don't want you to be afraid. But I do want you to believe me that I will breathe on your work. I will breathe on your efforts. I will breathe on what you've been doing, and I will give you a supernatural increase. And when you receive that increase, glorify me as God, Give your testimony, share, open your mouth, let people know what great things I have done for you. And as you continue to move forward, I will continue to breathe on what you do as you take the promised land. For you are a land owner, you are a land possessor, and you are a giant slayer in my name, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. All right, everybody get that? The Holy Ghost is saying that we're supposed to move forward and we're supposed to possess land. We're supposed to own land and we're supposed to slay giants in the name of Jesus. That can only happen by the breath of God. We can't do that in our own strength. Okay. All right. So if I don't have any prayer requests, amen. God bless you. Bless you. So if I don't have any prayer requests, one more time for prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now and I'll pray. Um, and if not, we can go ahead on and close out. That word blessed me today. I want to own land. Amen. All right. Amen. We all need to own some land. We all need to own some more property. Amen. But it's not just real estate. It's also ground God has given you. Now, what does that mean? That means like in your career. It means like in your family. There might be some things in your family that have troubled your family for generations. You can go in with faith, break the spirit of that thing and establish something new in your bloodline. So it's not just real estate, although that's part of it, but it's ground that God has given you. 
Uh, if you need a practical example, let's say divorce. Let's say divorce is running your family for four generations. You can stand up by faith and ask God to send you the right person to marry and then spiritually take a flag and plant it in your bloodline and say, from this day forward, no more divorce in this family. I'm going to raise up the children I'm going to have to believe in their marital vows and not get divorced. That's ground that God can give you. That's what I mean. That you can establish something new in your family that's never happened before. Let's say nobody in your family has ever either gone to school or completed a higher education degree. You can spiritually plant a flag and go back to college and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to be the first graduate of my generation and then release a spirit of educational excellence in your bloodline. Do you see what I mean? Do you see the advantages we have as Christians? Now you have to do the work. <laughs> you can't just pray it and say it and then sit down. No, that's genie concept. You can't do that. But if you're willing to do the work, to go back to school, to work hard, to get the degree, spiritually, you can establish something new. That's part of the advantage we have as believers. That no matter how long your family has something like, I know some families, for example, that suffer from chronic illness. And I know some children who grew up in faith who said, that's the end of that. They said that they didn't believe in sickness. They didn't believe that sickness was our portion as believers. They don't receive sickness. When they call for sneeze, they rebuke it. They don't, they don't get sick, and they planted something new in their family. See, that's what I mean by taking ground that God gives you. Because you can do that as a believer. You can do that. You can be like Joseph in your family. No matter how much hell you've been through growing up, and no matter what your full parents did, God can establish something new in you, take you to a new land, lift you up, make you a ruler in a new place, and then you breathe life on, on, on a whole new generation of people. And you're a stranger in a strange land. Joseph, Joseph was a Hebrew, and he breathed life on the Egyptians. God can do that if you believe. That's what I mean about taking ground. So when you hear the Holy Ghost saying things like taking ground, possessing land, slaying giants, it doesn't just mean real estate, although that's part of it. It doesn't just mean physical property. It means that anything that any demon has been sitting on in your family tree for generations you can break it in the name of Jesus. You can take the written word of God. You find a scripture concerning that. doesn't matter what it is. Money, divorce, sickness, long life, education, doesn't matter. Wisdom, spiritual gifts. If something has been sitting in your bloodline for generations, you find a scripture where you get a promise from God and then get a prophetic word and begin to breathe the word of God over that situation. Lift it up in prayer, pray God's word back to him, and then you say it. And then you have to be willing to do the work. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Then you have to be willing to do the work. Okay? And if you do all that, you'll watch God breathe on it like he's going to do today and this week. And he's going to give you an increase. He's going to give you a change. Okay? That's the advantage we have as Christians. It doesn't matter how long a demon or the devil himself has squat on something in your family. You can start something new. That's right. You can take the word of God, the written word of God, the logos, and then get a prophetic word from a prophet and begin to speak it, claim it, pray it back to God, and watch God move and give the increase. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's one of the advantages you have as a Christian. Okay? So this is one of the one of the most beautiful parts about being born again and being a part of God's kingdom. Because God takes the blood of Jesus and forgives everything in the past. Your past, your parents' past. God will take the blood of a G, the blood of Jesus, apply it to your account, and forgive. And then once God wipes the slate clean, then you ask him, What is your will? What do you want to be established in this family? I've dreamt of me going to school. That's right. If it's your dream to go to school, if that's the will of God of you, go before God and ask him, Lord, do you want me to go back to school? And if he does, then get a, a word, a, a, a scripture on it, start to speak it, get a prophetic word, start to speak that, and watch God move. But you got to do the work. You got to go to class. You got to do the homework. You got to pass the test. Okay, you got to do your part in the natural. I can't stress that enough. Okay, that's part of the advantage of being born again. 
Haven't you ever seen families where generation after generation after generation all die of the same thing? Haven't you ever seen families where everybody die before they 40? That's not an accident. Haven't you ever seen families where everybody struggles with alcohol? That's not an accident. Have you ever seen families where everybody struggles with profanity? They just cuss all the time. Just every time they open their mouth, bleep, bleep, bleep. Just cut. Haven't you seen that? If you're a believer, you can stop that. You can stop it. Uh, mental health, exactly, mental health issues. If you watch a generation, if you watch your great-grandmother struggle with mental health, your grandmother, your mom, your sisters, you can stop it in the name of Jesus. Now, God is actually doing the work, but you got to do your part, you understand. So you get a promise from God in the Bible, and then you get a prophetic word from a prophet. You lift that up to God, and then you start speaking it, and then you got to be willing to do the work. And God will breathe on it, and he'll create something new in your family that's never been seen before. And you can get that demon off of your bloodline and make something new. How do you know that, Prophet Taylor? Because I've done it. Remember, I tell you all the time, anything that I'm sharing with my audience, I've done it. I, I, I'm doing it, I'm living it, or I've done it. And I did it. I did it in many areas of my life. I looked at what had gone, uh, had gone on before, and I said, I want to establish something new, and I did it. Okay? Now, I did it. In the name of Jesus, and I did it according to the word of God, and I did it, I did everything I'm telling you, and I did the work. Okay? I didn't just sit down. I actually did the work, but I watched God birth some new things in my family bloodline because I had the courage and the nerve to believe him, to believe that whatever had gone on before didn't have to continue with me and uh, my children going forward. Understand? Okay? I did it. So that's why I'm trying to encourage you, and that's why the Spirit of God is trying to let us know that He sees your effort, He sees what you've been doing. Pray this word back up to Him, speak that prophetic word, and then breathe on it symbolically, and that will symbolize the breath of the Almighty. And before this day is out, before midnight strikes today, some of y'all are going to see some changes. And before Friday, okay, before we hit another weekend, you're going to see some changes. I want to break the spirit of lust and depression off me and my bloodline. Okay. Then here's what you do. What you need is 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you want to break a spirit of lust and depression off your bloodline, then here's exactly what you have to do. Uh, you need to do stuff like this in private because this is not for public knowledge. But you need to write down all of your lust-based sins. Anything that you did in the spirit of lust, that, you know, hookups or whatever, anything that you did with anybody you know you shouldn't have done, write it down. Okay, because you need to make a list. And anytime you get in a state of depression, write down what makes you depressed. Okay then the first thing you do is in the name of Jesus, you rebuke the unclean spirit off of your life. You cast out a spirit of lust and you cast out a spirit of depression in Jesus' name. You'll feel it break off you. You'll feel a freshness in your mind and your spirit you've never felt before. So the first thing you got to do is get rid of that unclean spirit. Then you take that list and you take it before the Lord and you confess your sins and ask God to forgive you and wash those sins off your account. You'll feel a whole nother level of cleansing when, when that happens too. And then after you do that, then you have to take a scripture and you have to reprogram your mind. Okay? You have to reprogram your mind to say, I am cleansed from my unrighteousness. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive, wipe the slate clean, and cleanse. So from that day forward, you start saying to yourself, I'm cleansed from my unrighteousness. I'm cleansed from my unrighteousness. Okay? You can also use 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Because you have to reprogram your mind. Once you cast the devil out, and once you confess your sins before God, things will be clean, but they'll be empty. 
you got to fill it back up with something new. Okay, so 1 John 1 and 9 and 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. You have to reprogram your mind because the devil is going to try to bring the old stuff back. Okay, once you cast a demon out in the name of Jesus, and once you confess your sins before God, you are delivered and cleansed. But the devil is going to try and bring it back. So you have to take the word of God and stand on the word of God and don't let him bring it back in your life. And the only thing that can stop the devil is the word of God. There's nothing else that will work. When Jesus was in the wilderness in Matthew 4 and the devil was tempting him, Jesus quoted the scripture three times. If the Lord had to quote the scripture in the face of the devil, what does that tell you? Okay, so nothing else is going to work against the devil except the word of God. So once you make that list of all the stuff that you did wrong, and once you cast that demon out of you, the demon of lust and depression, and then you take that list, you confess your sins one by one. You must name them before God's throne so God can apply the blood of Jesus. Wipe them off your account. Then you're delivered and cleansed, but you got to fill the house back up with right thinking, with right words, and that's 1 John 1 and 9, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So that the devil does not, he's, he's going to try to bring it back. He's going to try to bring you back into depression. And when you feel that spirit come back in you, say, nope, 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 I do not receive depression. But in the name of Jesus, I am a new creature. Old things like depression have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I'm happy now. Okay? That's the way you have to start speaking. And that's the way you have to start thinking. Okay, And when you feel that spirit of lust or when you get tempted to get in relationships that you know aren't right before God, say, no, 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 no. I'm not going there because I confess my sins. He was faithful and just to forgive me. And he cleansed me. He cleansed me. God bless you. He cleansed me from all unrighteousness. So you clean. So you don't have to listen to the devil because the devil is the one bringing all that negative stuff in your head. All that stuff to trying to pull you back into the person that you were. And, and, and you know, mama got that when she turned 53. That's the devil. <laughs> That's the devil. And you know, well, you know, daddy, he's always tipping. You know, he got them kids on the side. That's the devil. It don't have to be that way for you. Okay? Don't receive it. And don't hang around people that say stuff like that. Hang around people that, that quote 2 Corinthians 5.17. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, that means look, look at it. All things are become new. All right? Amen. Any more prayer requests? Amen. God bless you. I hope that, that helps you. Uh, God bless you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, share the word with you always because we don't have to live in bondage. I don't be claiming no so-called family. Amen. That's right. Yes, I heard that a lot. I'm like my father. Yes, you've got to get away from that. If somebody keeps saying, you just like your daddy, you've got to get away from that. Say, I'm like my heavenly father. I'm a new creature. I'm in Christ now. I'm like heavenly father. You got to say it. You got to think it. You got to feel it. You got to believe it. And you got to stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. And don't let the devil shake you. Don't let people shake you. That's the way we walk in victory. Okay? Jesus already died to give us the victory. We cast the demon out. We confess the sins. We get cleansed. But then you got to put that shield of faith up. Got to put that shield up. Prayer for more creative art gifts. Okay. For all the name of Jesus, we come to you uh, for our sister. She says she wants more creative art gifts, oh God. So if that's your will to bless her with that, oh God, then we know that you are able. So whatever it is she seeks, oh God, painting or dancing or, or singing or songwriting or instruments or whatever, oh God. Uh, if she seeks it, oh God, to glorify you, to add a new dimension to the way you can use her, to bring glory to her name, then give it to her right now, oh God. Give her increase on her creative art gifts, so that she may lift that up to you as well, to glorify your name. Because herein are you glorified that we bear much fruit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Okay, I'm just checking to see if there's any more prayer requests. Uh, God bless you, saints. You know I love you from my heart. And like I said, uh, everything that I'm teaching you, everything I'm talking about, I've done it or I'm doing it. OK, you can't speak with authority about stuff you don't know nothing about. <laughs> what can a man talk about having a baby? 
How, how can I speak about having a baby? How, how can I have any authority about having a baby? I don't know nothing about that life. <laughs> what would I know about that? Okay? But stuff you've been through, stuff you're practicing, stuff that you, you are familiar with, you know about that. You can speak with authority. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's nothing that I'm teaching or sharing that I haven't personally done or been through or that I'm not doing right now. That's how I know it works. I've seen it. I've seen the power of God in my life. Okay? And God wants that power to be in your life because he is no respecter of persons. That means, uh, I'm going to leave this with you about God's love and then we'll be through. Okay? God does not love any one of us more than the other. God loves each one of us as if we were the only one to love. Did you know that? Jesus told a parable about how it doesn't matter how many sheep he has, if there's one sheep that wanders away, he'll leave the 99 and go get that one sheep. What does that tell you? That means he loves you as if you were the only child he had. Do you know what that means in a practical sense? That means that if everybody on earth was saved and living right and you were the only sinner, Jesus still would have died. That's deep. Jesus still would have come out of heaven, become human, and he still would have died that brutal death on the cross just for you. Because God loves each of us as if we were the only child he had. Did you know that? You never have to feel unloved again. You never have to look at somebody else's life. You never have to compare yourself. Because he loves you like you were his only child. All right? So I want to leave that with you. I want you to be encouraged, all right? So we're going to play, uh, pray a closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you so much for your prophetic word, thanking you for your Logos word, thanking you for your Holy Spirit, because it is your power. We give you all the glory. We open our mouth and give you the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your name, because we can't do anything without you. You're the creator. You're the one that breathes the breath of life on anything, oh God. So we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for your Logos word, the written word. And we thank you for your Rhema word, the fresh breathed word through the prophetic gift, O oh God. And we give you all the glory. We're expecting you to do great things, O oh God. We're expecting you to breathe on our efforts. And before the sun sets today, we expect to see increase. And before this business week is out on Friday, we expect to see increase because you said so. And we believe you, O oh God. So we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you praise, O oh God, even before we see it with our natural eye. We thank you through the Spirit by faith, even before things manifest, O oh God, because we believe you and your holy word. So uh, thank you for the rest of this day. Uh, thank you for all that you're going to bring into our lives. And remind us, O oh God, to open our mouths and give you the glory and give you the credit so that uh, the body of Christ, the saints, will be edified. And so the sinners will be challenged. So they'll be challenged to know to come out of the kingdom of darkness and into your kingdom, the kingdom of marvelous, marvelous light, oh God, because you truly are God all by yourself, and we will have no other gods before you. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, saints, God bless you, God bless you. So glad to share with you today. So uh, now again, I'll be here my regular time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, on Facebook Live and Periscope, because I'm here every weekend. And then this Thursday, June 14th, I'll be here at 7 p.m. to do my teaching on No More Genies, where we're going to get rid. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. God bless you. Where we're going to get rid of those bad, those bad teachings, those wrong ideas about God, and get the truth in. Okay? All right, God bless you. Look for that increase today. All right? And I'll see you soon. God bless.